So you have a light duty utility cargo trailer, but you don't have any way to secure your load? If you need some way to secure your cargo, I'm gonna show you how to put some E-Track in, just like I did for my customer in this trailer, next. I'm Rick. <laughs> All depressing. Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. Build it! For your shack. This is a shack. Hello and welcome. Hey, if you're new to the channel, first time stopping by, thank you seriously so much for taking some of your time out to view. Please browse around, check out some of the other videos. I always ask that you consider subscribing and if you do, ding, 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 hit that bell so you are notified when these videos do come out. You never know what I'm coming out with. It might be something of interest and it might just help you out. Case in point, this video. This one, I have a customer, a caterer, who needed some way to secure the stuff that he is transporting to different events. He has a light duty utility cargo trailer, fully enclosed, nothing inside, no way to strap the stuff down. That's where I come in. Ask me if I can help him out. You know me, I'm up for any challenge. I don't stray away. I head ahead on and see what I can come up with. So I'm gonna walk you through the process. You're gonna see how we go about doing everything. Let's get to it. For the bottom E-Track, I decided to go eat inches up from the floor. I used my flush cut saw to cut out a 5 inch section of the wood that conceals the seam of the joining panels. When you're cutting, don't cut into the back too much. You see this is a seam that's just covering that seam up and right there is where the frame comes down so this is solid in here so that's what we screw into to make it solid so we'll set the new piece up here line it up and these are 24 these are 24 on center so there's the next one 24 inches there's the next one so every 24 inches that's where our frames at now with the help of my friend we hold the e-track up in its place he will secure it at his end with a one inch self tapping screw into the metal frame. Then it will come on the other side of me as I continue to hold it level. I have a level set on the rail. He will put in another screw into another frame. And then I will take over and continue to put them in the frame itself. And then in between the frame, I will go again every three to four holes and put a screw into the wood just for added strength. Again, these are one inch self tapping screws. Now for the top E track, we decided just to allow it to set on the wood that conceals the joint of the two panels. So I just cut out a five inch section above that to allow the E-Track just to sit on there and made it real easy. Now, as far as the E-Track is concerned, you remember you have to make sure that the holes in the E-Track line up to the frame or the studs in the trailer. I would measure over from the end to the very first stud or where the screw was at, and then I would get that measurement, transfer that onto the E-Track, from one end over and if I had to I would cut off an inch to three quarters whatever of the e-track for the very first hole and then I would get the total length from that the top rail on this side was about five feet long so once cut I would double check measurements make sure the holes lined up with the studs and then once we mounted it in between each stud I would add a couple more screws for added strength with a little extra piece we decided to go ahead and throw a front section on here just for a little extra area to strap things to. It is curved. So what we do is lay it on a 4x4 four four and just stand on it and just stand out a little bit at a time, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and just keep bouncing. 
till it conformed enough where we got close enough to here. And it's perfect, so don't need a fancy bending machine, just use with what you have. Again, we stood on a 4x4, set it right here. Stood about here, just kept bouncing, bending, and move it up, bounce, bend it until it got to the com until it conformed to what we needed here. So now he's got an extra space. Now we're going to put a shelf up there. Now to make a template for the shelf, I actually used a piece of cardboard, laid the cardboard on top of the trailer, marked my center line on the front of the trailer, and went around to the side and marked where the door was, and drew a line outlining the roof of the trailer. I cut the cardboard out, brought that inside, transferred the center line mark of the nose, and then on either side, I went out so far just before the door on the right, made a mark, made the same measurement on the left side, cut the cardboard to fit the conform to the corner of the inside of the trailer, transferred that center mark and side mark on the right side to the wood, drew the outline, flipped the cardboard over because both sides were not equal, got the left side to conform properly, marked my center mark and the end of the shelf mark, lined that up with the center mark on the wood, drew that side of the, tra of the uh, shelf out and cut it out. So with the help of my friends, we got the shelf, set it up, checked all the points that I had marked, center point and the sides for the width of the shelf make sure it all lined up good just getting it all up there making sure everything fits if there's any tight spots mark them now so i can sand it let everything fit good so now it's just time to get all the brackets made and mounted with my friend danny attending to the brackets i put my intention to putting the final touch on the shelf i chose to use a one by two piece of poplar cut it to length and marked where I wanted my screws to go into. I'm using two inch deck screws. I started from one end, worked my way across to the other, making sure that the bottom of the board was flush with the bottom of the shelf there. Not countersinking them just yet. I just want to make sure they all lined up and everything was flush. Once I got the piece of poplar attached to the shelf, I detached the edge went to the side, used my countersink bit, countersunk all the holes, and then reattached the shelf. After my friend Danny completed the brackets, uh, cutting them, drilling them, and then painting them, as you see on the other side of this shelf, I believe it was an 8-inch angle iron we cut, uh, drilled four holes that screwed into the side of the trailer, with two holes going up to the shelf. Uh, I lined up the shelf on either mark, and then marked the nose where three additional brackets were going to go. I believe they were 3-inch long brackets. Uh, once I marked those, the position, I drilled out each hole and used the self-tapping screws, a small drill, used the self-tapping self -tapping screws to tap itself in there, then reattached all three brackets, making sure they were level. Once they were all level, set the shelf back on, marked all the holes, drilled the holes in the shelf at a quarter inch because I used quarter inch, I think two and a half inch long carriage bolts with uh, Teflon nuts so they will not come loose. Attached them to the brackets and the shelf was very, very sturdy and secure. But because I didn't want to take a chance on anything happening, we uh, fabricated inch and a half solid stock uh, attached to the roof, angled it and attached it to the shelf so in case you are leaning on or something there's just no chance on that being you know broke or, or pulled down or anything it's just added extra stuff that I normally do I go the extra mile 
rechecked everything as you see it's all level the trailer we leveled out prior to doing this so, so we can make sure everything we did was level and we're good to go this thing I could actually I wish I had a picture I was actually hanging on it and I'm 165 or 160 somewhere on there so it can handle my weight no problem it can handle anything he wants to put up on this shelf and there you have it talk about an improvement oh my my customer was ecstatic he couldn't wait to use it matter of fact we delivered it Thursday Friday he had an event he was catering so it came at a perfect time and he has some new stuff and equipment he bought so he needed a, some way to secure the cargo as he was transporting it to his event so this was huge and he was just ecstatic and his other partners really really liked it that was very humbling to me I, just, I, I try to do my best and try to do what the customer wants and when they come back and they're very happy and I can tell that they're ecstatic and they just that, that makes you feel good. So that, that's a great feeling when I can actually do something and I know they're really, really appreciative and they like my work. That is huge. I am very thankful and very blessed for that. So hopefully it gave you some idea, giving you some insight, especially if you have a trailer that has no way to secure anything in it. It's not that hard to do. It really isn't. Basically, this is the one day project. Plan ahead, get everything you need, you can do that in one day. If you're just going to put the e-track, that's a few hour job once you get the e-track. Uh, I think it's going to be it, so I do appreciate you taking the time to view. Again, I really hope that I can help you people out some way, give you some idea, give you something to think about. If you're doing something like this, don't know what to do, where to go, maybe I've given you a starting point. Thanks again for watching. Be blessed. Take back your check and build it for your sanity. See you next video.